Hey everyone, um, welcome back. Today, we're going to be making wine. So, I'm going to talk you through the process and wear my silly apron that I've got here because the juice that comes out of these things is pretty uh, staining. So, uh, let me just show you this. This is rose wine making kit and um, breaks open so I can show you this. I think I'll bring that closer to the camera in a second. Um, made lots of different wines over the years. Um, some with kits, some without kits, some uh, from just recipes, getting grapes and things. Uh, this one here is not very nice <laughs> actually. This is uh, an orange wine and um, using real oranges but I think I put too much sugar in it because it's um, it tastes like vodka <laughs> rather than wine so it's quite potent that one so that's probably the one that we're going to throw away so that we can make a decent wine um, <clears throat> Here we have a uh, black cherry wine. It's this one here. And this one's brewing at the moment. And it bubbles. This thing here in the top is called a bubbler. Um, I think it's got some other names as well. But it's called a bubbler because it bubbles. So that's uh, quite self explanatory. You can see a couple of bubbles coming out of here now. And um, this one in theory takes about a, uh, a month to make um, it's pretty simple it's pretty much the same process as what the rosé does as well so um, this is a gallon demijohn um, that's the name of the glass bottle that's a demijohn um, in america i think you call them uh, carboys carboys but in england we call them demijohns so um, that particular one i've just shown you is about 14% and um, the one we're going to make today I actually don't know what the percentage is going to be so we'll have to find out and you can find out with this clever little thing here this is called a demijohn um, a demijohn <laughs> this is called a uh, hydrometer and it's got some figures going along here so I'll show you how that works in a little while so, join me in making wine. Okay, so what we have here firstly is the cleaning process. So, before that you um, put anything in the damage arm or use any of these bits and pieces, you want to sterilize everything and the reason for that is that uh, if you don't your brew might turn into something quite nasty because it uh, will harbor bacteria so what we have here is we have a clean clean um, sterilizing stuff um, you know not particularly technical it's uh, different ways of using it. it it says you know use for a few spoons to a, a jar or a demijohn or, um, but it makes a lot of makes a lot of um, cleaning solution that's 120 gallons um, one gallon is equivalent pretty much to six bottles of wine so this bottle here this one gallon demijohn is uh, six bottles of wine and that's four and a half liters, I believe. So what we're going to do is we're just going to chuck in a couple of, um, maybe a little bit more. And this is the cleaning solution. So we're just going to put some hot water in here. Just wait for it to get hot. Okay. So. All we need to do is drop everything in there. So, just, give this a little, just mix this solution in. 
And definitely wash your hands after you've uh, got this stuff on. Just mix it in. And all we're going to do is drop things in. So this is the bung. Helps keep the uh, demijohn airtight. And that goes, uh, this goes into the bung, and this is the bubbler. So the purpose of this is to stop air getting in, but allows carbon dioxide out. So because uh, it goes out through the water and out the top. So just a nice little, nice little soak. That's really hot water. <laughs> uh, this is my uh, brewing spoon. I don't actually use the spoon because that doesn't fit in the damage on. But uh, if you put it in this way, I like guess you can give it a stir. So just get that in there. I always put a few extra teaspoons in just because um, I find that you always need more teaspoons than you think you will to add ingredients and things. This one's going to be pretty simple. Um, this one here is just a little cocktail stick and I use it to help push the sugar um, through the funnel into the demijohn later and you'll see that when we come to that. So, it's kind of hard to soak that because um, obviously the whole sink has to be full and it floats but um, that'd be okay. This bit here is a, you know I don't actually know what it's called, it just sucks up water and um, just lets you taste the wine. Um, it also lets you take a, a hydrometer reading and as I say I'll go through that in a bit more detail later on. So just get this in there. Um, this jug here, don't really need it. Um, when you're measuring out how much water goes into the demijohn, this is quite useful. Because I've done it so many times, um, I know roughly how much water to put in. But I'll, I'll put it in there anyway, just in case I change my mind and I do it properly. Um, and then we've got the demijohn, which I'll have to um, fill as well. So, now the last part is the beaker and our hydrometer. So that's all in there nicely. Okay, so just going to add a little bit of this sterilizing solution into the demijohn. And I should have done this part first. So I'm just going to fill it with pretty scalding hot water just to give it a really good clean. And um, then we can get cracking. So, this is the most boring part of uh, making wine, but it is really, really important um, because, as I say, if you don't do this process, you could wait a month or two months. You know, this particular wine is very quick to make, but if you do a wine that takes a bit longer, you don't want to have all that time making it, and then three months down the line, it's uh, infected. And um, I mean, it, as far as I'm aware, it won't do any harm to you, but it just won't taste very nice. Uh, it won't taste like a nice wine. So very important to do this. And there we go, that's in the room. Oh, there we go. So all I'll do quickly is just with this little brush. Let's give it a stir. There we go. And try not to completely soak myself and the camera. There we go. All we do is we leave this for 10 minutes and uh, let the plug out and let all the water go and then just give it a quick rinse and then we're ready to take on our next stage. So uh, let's go to the next stage. So while the um, sink is full of all the bits and pieces just uh, cleaning themselves. I thought I'd just show you the kit in a bit more detail. So, make six bottles. 
which is into the uh, demijohn and gives you the instructions on the back step one step two step three four five six and seven so there's not that many steps and to be honest you know, there's not a lot of text on there either it really isn't that hard to make wine um, the kits are really nice if you've never made wine before then the kits are really nice because they make things simple and um, most of the ingredients are there already so that's what this little section is here so let's show you this in here we have I think there's some instructions yeah there's some instructions there we don't need those um, so we've got some different bits and pieces so let's see if we can talk you through these well let's start here in this tin there is juice you can hear that this is uh, grape juice this will be some form of uh, pink grape I assume because it's rosé and um, it's just concentrated and then you just dilute it with water which is uh, what we'll do later as well as talking about the measuring jug so we'll crack this open in a minute and show you the juice inside that's the most important part really um, and then we have another vital part to making wine the yeast the yeast is going to eat the sugar that we're going to add to our wine and that in turn will um, produce alcohol and it also produces carbon dioxide which is what's coming out of the bubbler so when it's making uh, you know while it's on the brew you know it's fermenting because it's bubbling when it stops bubbling in theory it's done now there are other reasons it may stop but it's generally because it's done uh, it might stop if it's too cold um, you want to keep this in a sort of fairly warm environment inside the house um, is a good idea not too hot not too cold just body temperature warm well you know nice nice warm environment um, the yeast will do a lot better and it will be a lot quicker as well so that's the yeast this stuff here you don't have to use this um, this is a nutrient that helps the yeast um, ferment so it just speeds up the process this is a very quick wine this this wine's made in about 30 days and you could leave it and it would get better uh, with age as so that really does seem to make a difference um, but this just helps speed it up and since it's coming up to Christmas and we like to have lots of uh, parties and things um, we want to make it quick these other bits here uh, this one it's quite important this is done later on we won't be using this today uh, the wine stabilizer is there to stabilize the wine so once it's made uh, itself you know, once it's fermented and it's pretty much done you add in the stabilizer this um, stops it from continuing to ferment because if somehow there was a little bit of res residue uh, sugar inside uh, a bottle so you put it into a bottle um, it could start fermenting again now if that happens then your bottle might explode so that's always a bad thing so the stabilizer stops that from happening um, and it does some other things as well which I'm not you know I'm not a pro at this uh, that's why I'm using a kit the kits taste nice guaranteed to taste nice um, the wine finings again this isn't a necessary ingredient but um, it does help so if you want to keep it as natural as possible then uh, you don't have to use all of these things that are here uh, they just help so the wine findings what it does once it's fermented the uh, all of the sediment from the fermentation process sinks to the bottom of the demijohn and it sits on the bottom uh, now to speed that process up you put in the wine findings and it makes the wine turn clear so that you're not drinking those bits that would uh, form in the demijohn so this helps it all sink to the bottom nice and nice and quickly um, really really useful product um, I actually have a better one than what this kit has in my little tub here this one's called quick clear and uh, I think this one works a little bit faster 
So, and uh, it's, an, it's a part A and a part B mixture. I'll just quickly show you. So, you put in a bit of part A, give it, I think it's something like 10 minutes, or 30 minutes, and then uh, you put in part B, give it a little swirl, and then it's clear in 48 hours, um, even 24 hours, depending on how much you put in. So that's a really good product, um, but it doesn't really matter, as I say. If you didn't use those, you just have to wait a bit longer for the sediment to go to the bottom of the glass. That's all it is. Um, and it might impair the flavour slightly if you do use these things. But again, if you're going to drink it pretty soon, it shouldn't really make any difference. Um, other things that we need, very, very important ingredient, is sugar. Without sugar, there's nothing for the yeast to eat. So I've got, hopefully, enough sugar to make this wine. Otherwise, it's not going to be as strong as I want it to be. Um, I think it's 450 grams of sugar. So let's have a look. I wonder if it says on here somewhere. Oh yes, 450 grams of brewing sugar. There it is. So that's got to go into the demijohn, and uh, we'll go from there. I tell you what, what. Well, and it's, as it's nearly done, we will open up and show you the grape juice. Just pop this on here like this. Now, it's not sweet either. You would sort of expect this to be sweet because it's grapes. But I think because it's a kind of concentrate, it's not very sweet. Um, really don't want to get it on your clothes. You can see, hopefully you can see there, it's kind of a gloopy um, consistency because, as I say, it's. It, I don't think it's a full concentrate, you know, um, but it's certainly not what grape juice looks like when you press it manually because I've done that and it's a little bit, uh, there's a lot more water in it, so that's why we add the water. But um, it's a good colour, and it, it sort of smells like grapes, but without the sweetness. It's a very strange smell, but um, it's like chemistry. That's why I like making wine. Um, so let's move on to the next stage. So this part here is one of the best parts. In fact, the best part, I think, um, other than drinking the wine. And this is putting it all into our demijohn. So, we've got our sugar, 450 grams. And I didn't sterilize this earlier, so I just had to do that. Um, make sure that if you do this, sterilize it, uh, your bowl. And just measure out how much sugar you need, so that's important. So I've got the sugar, got our grape juice, and some other bits and bobs that you've probably seen me use. Now, Put the grape juice in first. Here's a point to note. If you put the sugar in first and the funnel is completely dry, then the sugar in theory should go into the demijohn. But what I found, I'll show you, is that regardless of whether it's dry or not, the sugar gets stuck. So I have another method for that, that I'll show you soon. This will get our grape juice in, although the grape juice is in fact stuck. So we use our prodder. Get that sugar in. There we go. It's messier than I normally am. Let's, uh, let's just dribble that there. I'll just uh, grab a cloth. Okay. That's fine. So, let's carry on with the pouring. Get more grape juice in there. 
say, I was never very good at chemistry at school, but this is great. If you're thinking of presents for your uh, family at Christmas, I know that everybody gets scared talking about Christmas, but uh, this is great. Give someone a bottle of wine. Um, you can even get these things. I'll just quickly grab this. I won't grab it. Uh, I have these little bot bottles uh, that have like a, if you heard of the beer Grosch, have like a little um, bottle that pops open and they look really nice. Um, they take 500 mil of liquid rather than 750 uh, mil, which is what a wine bottle is. So you can actually get a little bit more in, um, or at least you get more bottles out of it and then you can give it to more than uh, six people because this will make six. Bottles of wine. So, what we do here with the sugar is very simple. Get some sugar in the pot, try not to spill all of it, and then we get some water. I use the water to get it in there. Again, it usually needs a little prod. I'm not going to use the spoon this time. I have a little device for this. Here's my little stick. Let's give it a little prod. And then, sooner or later, It isn't the normal sugar, you see, it doesn't dissolve anywhere near as easily as um, normal sugar, I don't think. Even though it should. There we go. So that's one lump. One lump or two, dear, as Mrs. Doubtfire says. Well, that's all the sugar more water. You can actually hear it bubbling. There we go. I'm using is cold. Um, you could sterilize the water first as well if you like, but I've never had to do that. Let's get a bit more water. starting to get a brew. So what we're aiming to do is get the brew up to about here, sort of where the shoulder is of the, the damage on. Let's do it in a little ASMR way. Jug, that's what it is. That's probably going to do it, actually, just there. Now, the reason you don't fill this right to the top is that when it ferments, 
it makes loads of bubbles and the bubbles go right up to the top and um, you don't want them coming out the top so now what we're going to do is swirl this mix in all the sugar because at the moment this is just a really really sweet grape juice I suppose It's kind of a sweet, sweet black currant, if you like. There we go. And uh, we're not quite done. I'll just show you something else that we do first. Okay, so this is a hydrometer. Hopefully, the camera can see that. So, what this thing does, and you don't need one of these, by the way, you don't need one of these. Um, see if I can use this stick to point and hold. So, we're going to take a sample of this mixture before we add the yeast. And we're going to put it into this little beaker, and then we're going to measure it with this. Now what the hydrometer does is it measures the specific gravity of what's in the beaker. Now what that tells us is how alcoholic this is going to be. So um, along here, see if you can see this, maybe you can't, but you've got numbers and they go from 5 to 17 and then beyond. Now when I put this in, this is going to bob along somewhere probably around 12% or 12. Now if it's bobbing along there, as long as I allow this wine to ferment all the way out, because over time this will go all the way down, as long as it gets from 12 to the yellow spot here, then I've made 12% wine. If I add more sugar, then this will go bob along at a higher number, maybe 15, and as long as I let it ferment all the way out, it will be 15% and that you can get a bit more technical than that but that's basically what we're aiming for so we're going to measure it and see what it comes out at okay so we're going to use our little what's it <laughs> I can't remember what this is called I literally cannot remember but anyway so take a squeeze, pop it in, and draw out some of this lovely stuff. And squeeze it in there. And do it again. Take some more. And you want quite a bit of this in there. And remember, I did sterilise all of this at the beginning as well. Okay. And then all we do pop this on the top and you give it a little bit of a spin just to get any bubbles off there we are so let's have a look okay well it's quite a bit stronger than I thought it would be now one thing you have to take into account with this is that the because the bottle's not completely full and it will be uh, you have to take a little bit of, it, of that into account. So, on the reading, it says it's going to be about 15 and a half, which is quite strong for a wine. But once we fill the water up later on, then that will balance out because obviously there'll be more water to sugar. So um, that should that should be okay. But uh, at least we have an idea. And, and as I say, you don't need to do this, it's just, if you're interested, you can find out. 
So the last thing we need to do before this wire is well on its way is find the yeast that I seem to have lost. Aha, here we are. So we've got our yeast. We'll just add this in. Just pour it in like this. Get in there. Now, if you ever go to a brewer's shop, you'll get better yeast than this. Uh, it, it still makes alcohol. It's just you, it, this is quite slow. You can get fast yeast, which just means it works a little faster. But that's okay. We're not in a rush. And then this is what makes the yeast work faster. It's got a strange smell. It's kind of a bready smell actually. Now it's not yeast, I mean the yeast smells more like bread. But it definitely has a certain smell to it, unlike anything else. Let me just put that all in there. Okay. And we just give this a little swell, not quite as aggressive as what we were doing earlier, just to mix it in. Just swirl it round, like that. step is to put a bit of water in here pop it in the bun get it in nice and tight like that pop it a little bit more a little bit more okay. so you can see the water's in here and um, this stops the air getting out, but the carbon dioxide that is coming and come out of this will go through the bubbles out, but the oxygen can't get in. And if you leave the oxygen to get to it, you'll end up with vinegar. So, unless you want vinegar, of course, then it's great for that. And the last thing that we need, this little red cap, and that's just to stop the flies, or little bugs, or spiders or anything dying in here <laughs> so there we are and there we have it so we've got our wine ready to go and that'll take about about seven days maybe ten days um, just in a warm place and it will just bubble along and once it's finished bubbling you can add in wine findings and the stabilizer and um, once it's once all the sediment has sunk you see I don't know if you can see there's all these little bits the yeast and things will sink to the bottom once that happens um, you just take the wine and you can bottle it straight away or you can I'll show you here use one of these uh, tools and all you do is you pop this end into the damage on you kind of have to take a little sip to get it coming out and then straight into bottles and try not to get any of the sediment in your drink because that wouldn't be very nice um, that's why this one has like a little base on it to stop it from getting sucked up uh, so in theory you just get the liquid and um, that's it. You just enjoy your wine. So it takes, to say, about 10 days. Um, then you add in your bits and pieces, your findings. And then I'd say really give it about a month in total, just so that it all settles and um, it's completely clear. Use one of these, put it straight into some wine bottles. 
And there you go. Easy as that. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. Bye.